Well, good evening and welcome to Bishop Eaton to our Redemptorist Oratory for a really short message tonight. As you can see, I'm dressed down today. I did manage to get a bit of a day off, um, for the most part anyway. I've been doing quite a bit of work this evening, just trying to work out how on earth we're going to cope in the next few days. And we have had one or two challenging things to deal with during the last week as well. But uh, one very blessed moment was the funeral of Father Bever Hearn on Monday. Um, those of you who were able to tune in. By the way, um, the sound went down, or rather the, the, uh, the filming went down during the Mass, but in fact it was all recorded. So if you were watching it and gave up, um, you can go back and pick it up and see the whole of the Mass. It was recorded, um, but it went down while I was singing the Kyrie, and I told a little story about when we were planning the funeral. I won't bore you with that now, so if you want to see what it was all about, you can go and see, but it was quite amusing uh, that uh, the first time I was sort of singing solo that, uh, that, we, that it went down and, and Bev had said something about, about me singing at the funeral. Anyway, um, you may have noticed some beautiful flowers there. They were sent by our confreres in Australia, very grateful to Father David Hoare. Um, and he was over here with Father Sharan, who was uh, the provincial, had been the provincial in Sri Lanka, spent uh, a little while with us last year. And uh, we, I must say, it struck up a, a lovely friendship. We keep in touch constantly. And he let me know um, that Father Tony Kelly uh, was having his funeral in Melbourne just yesterday. Now, Father Tony Kelly, uh, I knew pretty well. He, he was a, a, a wonderful character um, and another very good moral theologian, redemptorist uh, tradition, of course. Um, but I first met him in 1966. I think, he, if I remember rightly, he was studying in Rome at the time and came over to England for part of the summer. And we were on holiday in Whitby. And indeed, uh, he was there with us. And we arrived in Whitby on the Friday. And England won the World Cup on the Saturday. And that evening, he said to me, come on, Tim, let's go down and have a swim in the sea. And it wasn't a very pleasant evening. It was a, quite a wind blowing. The sea was pretty rough. But typical Australian, of course. Um, in he went, very strong swimmer. There was I, uh, very just about managing to keep afloat. Uh, and making jolly sure that I didn't uh, go out of my depth, but uh, he disappeared into the distance and came back again quite merrily. So I have that lovely memory. And we often met uh, at Moral Theology Congresses and various occasions uh, on and off uh, down through the years. So we pray eternal rest for him as well as for Father Bev. Um, in terms of uh, funerals, I'm always intrigued, as you know, uh, not just in funerals, but with, with all the connections that keep occurring. And tomorrow we've got the funeral of Michael Quirk, and Michael uh, knew Father Bev pretty well. Um, Michael, a great man, of course, he knew the old Latin Mass and, uh, and uh, the lovely traditions that he treasured. Um, and uh, anyway, I just remember uh, when Bev was celebrating his uh, Jubilee Mass uh, a couple of years ago, uh, they met one another. Um, the, the Quirk family came over. Michael was in the wheelchair, but uh, Bev came round and they had quite a conversation after the Mass. I still remember that. And they mentioned that to me uh, as we were planning tomorrow's funeral. So do pre pray for, for all those who are mourning their loved ones. Um, we've also had a very tragic death uh, in, in St. Mary's Parish um, yesterday. Um, and so I'd ask you to pray for that. The father of, of one of the children in Much Wilton School. And... Uh, Looking to the, the coming week, it, it, it is quite busy. I've just been doing a bit of work this evening, having had most of the day off, just trying to plan how on earth we're going to manage because um, I'm due in London on Tuesday uh, for the Provincial Council meeting. And uh, then on Wednesday, we have the other Provincial Council, the bigger Provincial Council with the extra couple, including uh, Father Andrew. Um, and somehow we've also got to manage the Feast of St. Joseph on Tuesday the reconciliation services in Bishop Eaton on Monday and the reconciliation services in St. Mary's on the Thursday. Um, so one way or another, please God, uh, I've drawn up a timetable. I'm hoping it's going to work, um, but it is, it is quite demanding at the moment and, and I, I, I would appreciate your prayers um, that one way or another, we'll be able to fulfill all the things that we've promised we'll try and do. In the meantime, we just, let's relax and, and allow the Lord to fill us with his peace and his strength and beg the prayers as we always do of our Blessed Lady, of our patron saints. And I'd ask you to remember especially St. Clement Hofbauer, um, that remarkable character, our second founder who took the Redemptress back from Italy over the Alps, as we say, and then of course the Redemptress spread all over the world. So tomorrow is his feast as well. 
Lord, we entrust ourselves to you. You know our needs. You know the needs of our world. Strengthen us again with the gifts of your spirit. Support us with the prayers of our Blessed Lady and our patron saints. Unite us in your love and fill our homes with the peace and joy of this holy season as we prepare to celebrate the great feast of Easter. Amen. <laughs>